Shalom, shalom. This is Brother Kasha Kuala giving all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Hakudash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone who rule and teach well. Peace, love, salutation to the elect, 144 first fruit. All right, we're going to jump right into it. What did the rich man lack? All right, so this is uh, Mark chapter 10 and 17. This is Mark chapter 10 and 17, and I may make this a, another installment of let's look into it because we are looking into this to see exactly what the rich man left. All right, so Mark 10 and 17. And when he <clears throat> was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Yahweh said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is it that is Yahweh. <laughs> you notice how the man came to him running and kneeled to him. First off, trying to show a, a level of humility and a level of um uh you could say gratitude, obedience, okay, and understanding who rules, okay? But he asked him what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Now, Yahushai answered him and says, why callest thee, thou me good? He totally bypassed that question. He was focused on the, the first part of what he said. That's how you know the, the Lord, Yahushai, was very attentive. He paid attention to every little thing, every little detail. He went and dissected the entire statement in question because the good master part was a statement. And to the question... Okay, he didn't get to that yet. He dealt with the part first of good master. That's how intricate Yahweh Shai was when he spoke. He's very detailed. He was very he's very knowledgeable. He knew when to pinpoint things. But at the same time, his teachings were extremely simple, which we're going to get into as well. So verse 18, and Yahweh Shai said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is Yahweh. Now you see. He gave all glory, honor, and praises to his father, Yahweh, right there. That is what we are to do on the highways and byways. The first and foremost, we give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, with anything, okay? So Yahweh Shai made sure he magnified the name of the Lord, uh, of Yahweh first. So verse 19, it says, thou know, knowest the commandments. <clears throat> now he's answering the second part. It says, what shall I do that I may uh, inherit eternal life? I was like, okay, well, you know the commandments, all right? It says, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother, okay? Verse 20, and he answered and said unto him, Master, all these I have observed from my youth, pretty much, pretty much saying, well, I do these already. Okay, which you can take that. Let me, matter of fact, let me get John, the second chapter real quick. I love this. I love this precept because it goes with uh, Yahweh Shai's, uh, I don't know what the hell that was. It goes with Yahweh Shai's um, omniscience. And the word omniscience means all knowing. Okay, this is, this is perceiving Yahweh Shai's omniscience. So this is John 2 and 23. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles, which he did. Correct. But Yahweh did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. Omniscience. Verse 25. And needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Why? Because he created him. Okay. Omniscience. Omniscience. Omni meaning all. Science meaning to know. The Lord is a know-it-all. <laughs> All right? Simply put, he's a know-it-all. He already knows. So he didn't commit himself to this man when he came and ran and, uh, and kneeled down to him. He didn't, he didn't bite on that bait. Okay? Because now the man in verse 20 is turning around. Well, I already know all that. All right, then. Okay. Let's, let's keep going and see if you know this as well. So Yahweh Shai dug deeper. Okay, verse 21. Then Yahweh Shai, beholding him, uh, Salakia, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest. 
Now the title of this lesson is The thing that the, the rich man lacked Okay It says go thy way Sell whatsoever thou hast And give to the poor And thou shalt have treasure in heaven And come Take up the cross And follow me Verse 22 Let's see how he responded And when he was And he was sad At the saying And went away grieved For he had great possessions Because he was a rich man Now Yahweh Shai didn't really Simply tell him What he lacked What he lacked He already knew Because according to John 2 He knew what was in man He knew this man's intent He knew what this man Could bear and what he couldn't He already knew That's why he already knew what he lacked And what the thing is that he lacked Was sacrifice That's what he lacked he lacked the sacrifice to go take up his cross and bear the burdens and follow Yahweh Shai. So that's what I want to get into this lesson about. Okay? We all have gifts. All the brothers are beautiful. The, the sincere ones, I'll say. All the sincere brothers are beautiful, man. They all have a gift. Whether it be knowledge in the uh just knowledge period in the scriptures. Very wise. Okay? Very understanding. A brother may be uh, uh, practice mercy to the to utmost intent. Um, uh, another brother may practice humility, perfect not perfectly, but I'm just speaking. You know, that's you could tell he's a very uh, humble brother. There may be another brother just very knowledgeable in the in the history. Another brother who's gifted with the tongue, meaning in the, in languages in languages, pr primarily the Hebrew. You see, you got so many different lots and avenues and, and gifts and skills and talents that the Lord gave the sincere men. Now, what the hell would those talents be if none of those men sacrificed? You see, what the fuck would you be using your gift if you don't want to sacrifice? How would you be using your gift if you don't want to sacrifice? If you don't want to miss two hours of sleep to go link up with a bro because he's struggling with the Hebrew? If you don't want to, if you don't want when when brothers from different other states come down, you don't want to open up your quarters so they can have a place to let the, uh, uh, rest their head so they don't have to come out of pocket to uh, get a hotel because you don't want to sacrifice. You see, because you don't want to find avenues in order to get to the spirit because you don't want to sacrifice. Because you have an excuse why you can't make it to camp or you can't make it to class or you can't make it to a, a to a, a brotherly gathering or a high holy day. Because you don't want to sacrifice. What use are you and why did the Lord even hand you a gift if you're not going to sacrifice in order to use it? That goes into the to the parable of the talents. That's another scripture that you can link up with sacrificing. You got to take leaps of faith in this thing. This thing ain't no walk in the park or some well, um, like you have everything organized and planned out. The spirit go where where it lists it, like it says it in, in John 3, 3 and 8, John 3 and 8 to be specific. What's the point of you having these gifts and these talents that the Lord gave you, but you're not willing to sacrifice? You're being like the rich man. You're being the one, oh, man, I got to drive 40 hours to a bro's house. You're grieving because you have a possession and you don't want to give it up. So now you're selfish because you don't want to sacrifice. What kind of man are you? That's some bullshit. I'm going to sit here and say it like that. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of hot in the spirit right now. Okay? I was speaking with the Bishop of Tazawang. Okay? And one of the main things he was saying, one of the main things you got to do is sacrifice. You got to let go of whatever you got going on and sacrifice for the body in order to achieve spiritual gifts and the spiritual goals. This ain't no... Uh, Routine, like the Bishop of Tazawam said. This ain't no routine. You can't have no routine in this. You go where the Spirit tells you to go. And the Spirit requires you to sacrifice. 
whether it be your time, whether it be your sleep, your comfortability. You got to sacrifice something. The scriptures say give your body as a living sacrifice. So if you could barely make it to a class or make it to a camp, you need to check yourself. Okay? Now I'm going to get some words. I'm going to get the word, ooh, Salakia. I'm going to get the word patient. Okay? Didn't mean to exit out of that. I'm going to get the word patient real quick. And let's see what it means. The word patient, enduring without complaint. Let's keep going. Bearing, supporting, suffering, enduring, and permitting. That's a sacrifice. You're enduring something without complaint. Yahweh Shai had to endure the cross without complaint. Okay? Let's get sacrifice. Sacrifice it says offering of something, especially a life. Again, we're giving our bodies as a living sacrifice to a deity as an act of prop uh, propitiation or like a I'm sorry or homage, meaning I owe you. That which is offered in sacrifice, sacrifice or offering. It says performing priestly functions for or sacrifices. Aren't we all kings and priests? It says a sacrifice to make, to do. It says an act of giving up one thing for another, something given up for the sake of another. You give up your beloved sleep, your beloved time for the young Akim coming up, man. And for yourself. Passion. Sufferings of Yahweh Shai on the cross. That's what passion means, man. The etymology of passion means suffering of Hamashiach on the cross. And you can't get an Uber and you can't drive 5, 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes to get to class or camp. You better check yourself. But you expect to get on a chariot after what Yahweh Shai did for us. But you can't sacrifice a little bit. Christ's passion, uh, Hamashiach's passion, a physical suffering, okay? Suffering and enduring. Enduring means to make hard. Let's get the word suffer. Allow to occur or continue. In order to stay in this thing of ours, you got to allow yourself to sacrifice so you can continue in this truth. Without sacrifice, you're going to get the boot straight up. Without going the, uh, the going the extra mile, you're going to get the boot straight up. The Lord is looking for workers, man. Not men who are comfortable and settled on their leads. Fail to prevent, suppress, also to be made, uh, made to undergo, endure, be subjected to. Come on, man. And then when you read Mark 10, the rich man wasn't ready to suffer. He wasn't ready to be in subjection to the word. To Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, he wasn't ready. I'm not ready. He wasn't allowing himself to continue in the, in the truth. He didn't tolerate. You see, he didn't have passion. In order to stay in this thing of ours, you got to sacrifice. Don't be this rich man. Don't be the one who held his talents in a napkin. Get up off your ass and do something. Get active. Okay? Get up and get active. The scriptures talk about how Satan is a roaring lion. But before that, it tells us to be vigilant. The word vigilant means active. If you're vig vigilant, you're active. If you're vigilant, you're sacrificing. You're suffering. You have patience. You have patience. You have passion. If you're not, you're just dull and void, man. Or null and void. You're, you, you're useless. 
Since you don't want to put your hand fully to the plow and sacrifice something, man. You got to look at yourself every day. What am I going to sacrifice today for the body, for myself, and for your help? But ultimately, first and foremost, for your help, I should have a shot. What am I going to sacrifice today? Your day goes by. Think about what you did. What did I sacrifice today in order to get better? Did I sacrifice a bitch calling me up? Did I sacrifice going out to eat? Did I sacrifice uh, uh, what? Eating food, period, and drinking? Did I sacrifice, you know, sleep? Did I sacrifice energy? You could lay up in the bed all day if you want. What did you sacrifice? You see? Don't be like this rich man. Be like the 12 who dropped everything they had and picked up the cross and, and ran towards you. How was shy? Be like that, man. Because they sacrificed. As simple and plain as that, man. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rechak with Dodge. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. The ruling teach well. Peace, love, salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. Shalom.